Today we're going to answer another subscriber question. And in response to our last video, which pertains to this video, on the Supermicro Dual M.2 NVMe adapter, David White asked, what about heat sinks or fans for the M.2? Okay, that's a great question. We talked about that all through the video, but we didn't do that. And we're going to explain to you in this video, if you'll give me a minute, uh, what the issue is and how we're going to resolve it. So the title of this video is going to be, our test platform is the Gigabyte TRX40 Designare motherboard. Okay, we have two 16-lane slots and we have two 8-lane slots. The two 16-lane slots, we have thermistors or temperature sensors. On the two 8-lane slots, we do not. So that's one sensor. Set that aside away. Number two. Each M.2 NVMe drive is made up of three components. Now typically in the past we only talk about two components, but those three components are the controller, the non-volatile memory, and the DRAM. On the controller is a heat sensor. And the heat sensor we're not able to see on the Supermicro card. So that's our problem. So what I want to do is we're going to call up the control panel and I want to show you what we see and we're going to have that side by side with uh, HW info so we can see the sensors. I'm going to point that out. I want you to see what we see so you'll know what we know. Then what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to have to transfer that card to the motherboard so we can see the sensor and I'll show you the software control panel and the point of all this because of four things that need to be done from the control panel. Number one, we need to be able to see that sensor. So we're not getting telemetry on that drive. Number one, we need to see that sensor so we'll know heat. Uh, number two, we need to be able to see the uh, stats of the drive so we know uh, what kind of longevity the drive is going to have. Number three, we have no idea about the firmware. Number four, I'm going to show you. We're going to go to the control panel. You'll see it. And again, we'll bring up hardware info. Then when we get through, through the magic of video, we'll turn around and show you the drive on the motherboard. Now, we have four spots we could put that on the motherboard. We have, for the third time, we have two M.2 NVMe connectors that are directly connected to the CPU. And we have the other two M.2 NVMe connectors that are through the chipset. So of the two that are to the CPU, we're going to use the second one to the CPU because it makes the most sense in this location. And that location right now being right under the Thunderbolt card. And you can see that screw right there. It sits from here over. Now another thing I want to point out, and we're going to bring this back around. To be able to understand, and, and I've got the control panel because I want to show you the number four. But to understand all the heat sinks on all the motherboards that we're aware of all use aluminum. Okay, they can either be aluminum or copper or they can be a combination. So when we get through with this video showing you the control panel, what we see and what we don't see and what we need to see, then in the next video what we're going to do is go through five different heat sinks because we're going to have to determine which one is best. Now, even after that is done, we make a determination based on space relations because we've only got so much space to work with. Because right now we've got this card on this side. So we've got maybe an inch and a half here to work with, about the thickness of a two by four. So one cooler that we're looking at is about an inch, nine tenths of an inch. It will clear the space, but we're right up next to the power supply. We would have the same problem with being over here. In fact, it'd be just a little bit tighter, but it would fit. So either side, what we're looking for is what's gonna give us the best performance for heat. But to be able to test, we're gonna have to be in this slot. And not being able to see those sensors in that slot is a big deal. Now, our intention was when we got through with the Super Micro card, we're going to go to the Cable CC card. But David asked the question, and he's right. We talked about it, but when I saw what was going on, because this kind of, it's like a rabbit hole can of worms, but this is an important rabbit hole can of worms. So we need to see this, because if you put those in RAID, you want to be able to update the firmware. The firmware has to be updated when the cards are not in RAID, when the uh, M.2 NVMe drives that are on the add-in card adapter are not in RAID. Okay, we have to be able to see them. And because of the fourth option, let me show you the control panel. Okay, up here at the top, we select device. By default, it shows the array. And remember, on this computer, our RAID array is on this four drive RS quad card. So that's our boot drive. Our super micro card is down here. And what we're proposing is to take the SN850, the WD SN850 off of that and put it on the motherboard so we can see the sensor. Now, we have sensors on these two 16 lane slots, but we do not have sensors on the motherboard for these two 8 lane slots. That was uh, an eye opener to me and I didn't realize it. I'll show you when we get to that. But not only can we not see a sensor that does not exist on the slot, we cannot see the sensor that does exist on the M.2 drive. Neither one of them. 
and each control panel is specific. And I'll, uh, I want to stay focused on the SN850 since that's the title of the video for relevance to the control panel because it's important about the firmware on that drive. So let's take another look at that. So we select the drive. And if you'll notice, we don't see capacity, we don't see volume, we don't see temperature. It's not reading that sensor. And because we're not getting telemetry, we have no idea of the life remaining on that drive. I go to performance, I get nothing. I go to tools, and the fourth option would be if I wanted to erase the drive. But if I wanted to do a firmware, and if you'll notice here, we've got two items we do see. We see the model name, we see the model number. We do not see PCI Express generation, we do not see length width. And we also have a serial number, and it tells us the uh, maximum logical block address space. But what it doesn't tell is very disconcerting. And the fourth option would be to be able to erase the drive. I would be uh, concerned about doing that from this application without being fully aware of the drive. Because if I clicked on firmware update, and it says the firmware is up to date, if I click on check for firmware, it, it does not see it. Now, that's a, that's a misnomer. So that's a misstatement. So that's an issue. And if you notice here on the top, where we've got model firmware version, drive health unknown and security unknown. So when we were getting into this with a Supermicro video, we'd never seen this card before. And when I started doing that, I realized I had to cut that so we could keep it tight and keep it just about the card. But this is about the control panel, this is about the drive, and this is about what we do see and what we don't see. So now through the magic of video, the next thing we're gonna do Pull that drive out, put it on the motherboard, look at this software again, and you can see what we see. So let's take a look at the statistics from Hardware Info 64. Now, if I put the mouse over this, a dialog box is going to pop up and tell us what's what. We see a drive, which is the WD. We also see the AMD RAID, and we see the Samsung 980 Pro. What we don't see is any kind of uh, sensory uh, information about heat and also the read and write activity. We don't see anything, 0%. So the telemetry that we are receiving is incomplete. All right, let's take a look at the heat sensors. We see the heat sensor on the GPU. So we have PCI Express plus 16 underscore one and PCI Express plus 16 underscore two. We do not have heat sensors on PCI Express by eight underscore one and PCI Express by eight underscore two. That's my point, that's the difference. So to reiterate of two possible heat sensors, one on the slots and the second one on the controller, on the M.2 NVMe card, we can't see either one of those sensors. One, because one doesn't exist on the slots. And two, we're not seeing the uh, secondary one, which is primary, on the drive. I want to thank you guys for joining us. We've just spent some time for a video that I thought we was going to show you about how to downgrade the BIOS because we thought there was a problem with on the Gigabyte TRX40 designator with BIOS number F4Q. Well, the problem is not with the BIOS. The problem is uh, understanding how the BIOS works. So the title of this video is going to be How to Update the Firmware on an M.2 NVMe Drive as it pertains to the Gigabyte TRX40 Designare, specifically being the drive's in RAID or outer RAID. So I'm going to go into the BIOS, show you what I'm talking about. And where this all started, we were trying to figure out how to see the drives on the super micro card we could not for the firmware I thought there was an issue with the BIOS the issue is not with the BIOS the issue is understanding how the BIOS works and what you have to do to achieve that goal I'll show you what I mean okay on the Gigabyte TRX40 designare I'm gonna press F2 now let's get all this straight oh I haven't turned the memory XMP back on okay that's back on up here we have a TRX40 Designare BIOS F4Q. So there is not an issue with the BIOS, the issue is with the user. On the M.2 right now we can see those two drives that are on the motherboard. This is important because if we're going to update the firmware, we have to see those drives. The problem is we cannot boot a RAID, we have to be out of RAID, so the RAID has to be turned off. So if we're booting on the RAID, We've got to have another drive that we can put on the motherboard that will not be in RAID so that we can then see the drives also not in RAID and update the firmware. Once that's done, then we can remove that drive, reboot, go into the BIOS, turn RAID back on. They'll all have updated firmware. Simple. But it's been a convoluted process figuring that out because I did a BIOS downgrade because I remember seeing this, but I didn't remember 
how I saw it. I just remembered seeing it. And the issue was while I was monkeying around because RAID gets turned off, everything gets blown out when you update the BIOS. So my first thought was there's a bug in the BIOS. And then I realized it was not a bug in the BIOS. It's that way by design. So to reiterate, if you're going to run these drives in RAID, you need to have a separate drive that you can run, but you need to be able to pull it out when you're not using it. In other words, you put it on there so that you can update the firmware. I'm going to show you. So right now we see those drives. I'm going to press F2. Let's go to boot. And we see all the drives. We see the Samsung 980 Pro. We see the WD Black SN850. And because we have bifurcated the slots, we now see the four Sabrent drives. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these two drives that are on the motherboard off and we're going to put them back on the Super Micro card. Then we'll put another drive on the motherboard that we can boot from. So we should see four, five, six, seven M.2 drives. We will then boot the computer into Windows off of the drive on the motherboard, not in RAID, so we can see all these drives. And then we'll be able to update the controller software. Otherwise, if we turn on RAID, it doesn't see any of the drives. And that's, that's been our issue. So it uh, took a while to bring this around. But I want to continue down this path and show you how this works. So F10, we didn't do anything. We'll save configuration. So I got to suit up because I got some work to do. Okay, we have an error code that I've never seen before, 94. PCI bus enumeration for detecting how many resources... Are requested so I'm going to turn on above 4G decoding so we'll press F10 save and we'll reboot okay I had to pull out or I pulled out the uh, quad card and I pulled out the uh, super micro card never seen that before very interesting so as soon as we get a post and the only thing that was different was we put the uh, Seagate fire CUDA drive back on the motherboard it's been there before but hadn't been in a wall okay and we're going to try to put the um, Super Micro card back in. We power up. And we're looking up here at the BIOS code. Hopefully we don't get 94 again. And I made one change in the BIOS. Only one change. Two 16 lane slots and two 8 lane slots. Everything's covered. So let's see if we get past this error code this time. And if I hear a post, we're going to go in the BIOS. We got a post. All I did was turn on four, above 4G decoding. So uh, that has to be turned on now. Okay, let's take a look. Settings, IO ports. I turned on above 4G decoding and I left the limit at 40 bits. Now down here it says select above 4G limit note only available when you also disable CSM. So I'm going to leave that at 40 bits. And it says here globally enables or disables 64-bit capable devices to be decoded in the above 4G address space only if system supports 64-bit PCI Express decoding. So uh, that's a new wrinkle in my horn, why that had to happen now when we didn't have to have that before. So, uh, you know, change one thing changes everything. All I did was change the drive on the motherboard. This is absolutely fascinating. All this so we can get to the firmware on the M.2 drives. Wow. So I'm going to look at the BIOS F2, M.2. We don't see them. So F2 for the advanced mode. Because we have RAID Expert up, we've got to go into SATA and turn RAID off. And when we disable the boot, we'll no longer show Windows Boot Manager for that drive. It should show it for the other drive that's on the motherboard. So we're going to do F10. Last modified NVMe RAID mode will be disabled. We'll watch for the code. And when we hear a post, we'll go back in the BIOS, look at the drives again. Fascinating. Fascinating procedures. So we have a quad card that has four drives, and we have a dual PCI Express NVMe adapter that has two drives. Post, back into the BIOS, let's go to boot, and we see all of our drives. And the Seagate Fire CUDA is now shown as the first drive to boot from. Okay, that's, that's correct. That's what we want. And the other four drives, the Sabrent drives, are all on the quad card. And there's the WD Black SN850 that we're trying to get to, and there's the uh, Samsung. And those two drives are on the Super Micro card. Okay, what a dog and pony show. So when we reboot, because we are not in RAID, we should boot to that drive. So F10, save. Convoluted. Took a long time to get there. We are now at a little over two hours doing this. 
All right, save configuration. Let's see if we boot to that drive now on the motherboard. We should. First, it'll look at the first boot device, which is the Blu-ray drive. Then it'll come down the tree and go to the second drive, which is the Seagate Fire CUDA. Okay, we hear post. And I don't remember the state of Windows on that drive. We're going to find out. I hope. Yep. Here we go. We picked up the drive. It's got the window. We saw the donut. We're into Windows. And we're booting off that drive. Just for grins. Windows flag E. This PC. And there's our drives. The WD Black and the Samsung. That's what I wanted to find out. Now we should be able to see the firmware, so we got to go pull that tool down. So we're going to install Dashboard right quick from Western Digital. Launch Dashboard. And we now have Telemetry. We're looking at, and it went to default, WD Black SN850. And it tells us the model, the firmware, the drive health, and the security. New firmware update available. So this tells us performance. We can check for temperature. We had none of this before. Tools. New firmware available. Create a bootable USB drive. None of that was available. Update firmware. I would feel safe now erasing the drive with this. Update using file on my computer. Gaming mode off or on. Definitely off. Back to status. Life remaining 100%. And down here, interface speed. Generation 4, 4 lanes. Connection. Generation 3, 4 lanes. Well, we did the test, and we had the speed. So that implies the drive is generation four, four lanes, but that implies that the card is generation three. Okay, that's the first drive, WD Black. I'm gonna close that. Now let's take a look at Samsung Magician. We're gonna install a new version of Samsung Magician. So we're good to go with the BIOS we've got. There's not a problem with the BIOS, the problem is when you're going to update the firmware on the drives, you cannot be in RAID. You have to turn RAID off. So you have to boot from a drive that's not RAID. Now let's look at the Samsung 980 Pro and see if we get full telemetry. Samsung 980 Pro, we have telemetry. We see our drive health. We see our drive temperature. We can look at drive details. And by default, it picks up on that drive. Drive health, drive temperature, serial number firmware. It also shows there's an update, firmware update required. And it shows the interface, PCI Express Generation 4x4. Perfect. I'm stoked. And also, now that we have full drive telemetry, we could use Secure Erase if we choose to. So now the question, what about those Sabrent drives? We've come this far. Let's take a look at the Sabrent control panel. We'll close that application down. Sabrent rocket control panel. Download. Scanning drives, and there we have it. Okay, that sees the Seagate. Let's change to a Sabrent drive. Bingo. We've got temperature, 37 degrees, 98 degrees Fahrenheit. NVMe 4.0. And we can do a firmware upgrade. And it also shows the sector size. Very nice. Firmware serial number. And, of course, it doesn't show a drive letter because this has been in RAID. And we've got disk health, 100%. Drive number two, drive number three, a little bit different change in temperature. Drive number four, again, a little bit of a change in temperature. And back up to drive number one. Outstanding. So I think the takeaway on this, what a dog and pony show. If you're going to update the firmware on the drives, you've got to be able to see the drive so that you can use the control panel, whatever brand drive you've got. We've got uh, four brands of drives in here. Four, five, six, let's see, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, we got four brands of drives. The only drive we didn't look at was the Seagate Fire Cuda. That's, uh, that's okay. But we've looked at the other three, the WD Black, the Samsung uh, 980 Pro, and we also looked at the Sabrent. Phenomenal. So uh, our takeaway on this, to do your firmware, you cannot be in RAID mode. You've got to have a drive that you can boot from that's not in RAID so that you can look at the other drives because RAID has to be turned off for those drives to be seen correctly for those control panels to work. So I want to thank you guys for watching. This is Builder By. Hope you enjoyed that. We're on to the next video. We're out.